So next on my list is the sagging front end with the weight of that push bar on the front of it, the winch and a few accessories and whatnot. The uh, bike has kind of got a towed in look to it. See the tops of the tires are, are tipped in, kind of looking like Bambi on ice. So what I did is uh, I got myself a set of springs and uh, these are EPI springs and they are the WE32010 and uh, they're supposed to be a heavy duty heavier rate spring so we're going to replace the, the front springs on it and uh, hopefully it'll bring it back up to regular ride height alright so removing the spring from a 2006 Sportsman and I'm pretty sure uh, there was like 2006, 2007, 8 era uh, they were pretty much done the same way probably a lot of other years too so the front uh, suspension is uh, all in the one with along with the bearings and everything else for the front wheels once the front rack gets removed which is on a previous video I did earlier a uh, very simple process uh, it's just a matter of removing this top bolt here you don't need spring compressors or anything like that yes this is under a little bit of tension uh, but not so much uh, once you have the bike jacked up off the ground this here is a three-quarter inch nut and this one here is a 3.8 and essentially if you only have regular tools uh, you just put your wrench on this one and a wrench on this one and it allows you to turn the nut you can release some tension by uh, unbolting these two bolts right here and that'll just uh, allow this to slip away from the spring the spring will actually have no compression in it then whatsoever. Your first step is to take the rack off, your tires, tire that you're working on anyway, that side. Uh, loosen off these two bolts. You don't have to take it all apart, just loosen them off. Uh, and you'll see your spring will come loose. And uh, then you just take off the top up here. And you don't have to take the strut out or anything. All you do is just push down on your front end and all this will be pushed to the side but I'll show you all that now in a second once we get going here front tire is now off and uh, next step we're going to loosen off these two bolts here uh, they are a uh, half inch so you put a socket on one side and a wrench on the other and just loosen them off until you start to see this drop away and once this drops away you know your tension is off your spring and you can undo the top All right, based on a bad experience I had with these before, I'm wearing uh, heavy gloves because if your wrench slips, uh, there's a lot of things here that can hurt you. So, essentially, now some people put a jack underneath it and all that, but trust me, there's uh, I've had these off before. And you only got to back them off until the bolt gets loose. Give it a couple extra turns just to make sure there's a bit of play in it. This one up here is, uh, has got a clip on it that holds on the brake line, so you got to be careful with that. You can see it drop away there now, so I just give it a couple extra turns. You can see, right, no tension on the spring, 3 socket on the top, and my 3 quarter inch wrench holding the nut steady. And just back off the whole top shock assembly. A little bit of rust on the top of this one, making it a little bit difficult. So it's not like you had to see me undoing a nut anyway. So we have the nut. There's a big washer underneath it. And then there's a plastic cap that has a rubber bushing it all goes together like that and the sp your inner shock rod you can compress and push down on the whole assembly at the same time there you go free and clear so on top of this there's a just a little plastic piece here so we'll take that off and put it aside 
Then there is a nut right here, which is once again a three quarter. And you put your 3 8 socket on this once again, put your wrench on this, loosen this off, and that removes this top cap. And then we can pull the spring right out. Once again, <coughs> gloves, bad things can happen. go. In my case, we're just so much rust near the top that the nut is running out of space here. Now you can see I can remove the whole thing. All right, sorry about that off camera work there, but essentially with the, with the leather glove on it, I was able to just Hold this tight enough and use the uh, use the impact gun and spin off the top nut. Now we have the old spring assembly here. You can see that rubber stopper up in the top. So we just got to make sure we put that in the new spring and we just take it apart like that. And then we can pop that out. All right. So that. Uh, comparing our new spring to our old one, we can see that uh, the old one was like a variable rate spring with different coils here. The new one is actually a little tiny bit shorter, but it's stiffer, so it doesn't allow as much compression. So even though it looks like it might be shorter, um, the bike won't drop down as far because it, uh, it's capable of holding more weight. So we'll get this new one just slid back in place. Uh, the opposite procedure, we just use to take it all off, and then we'll compare the two sides. Alright, so we got that up on top of the new spring, and it's just a matter of sliding the whole assembly together. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just clean this rag here for a second. Just got it off just while to clean it, hey. Those of you wondering uh, how you know where you need to put the shock back in and all that, uh, it actually only goes in to this so far. Uh, and it'll bring up uh, and if you're concerned about that you can also see the old wear mark here so the next step of course is to put it all together the same way we took it apart so we're going to fully extend our shock we're going to run it all up through that rubber get that through like so then there's this metal cap and that metal cap goes over the top of the shock like so and you have the, the big nut the three-quarter inch nut that goes back on first thing I'm going to do though is put a little bit of stuff on those threads anti-rust compound here everything here gets covered in salt in the winter and rusts out so this is an anti-rust compound and it actually kind of eats the rust while you're using it so makes the threads kind of clean all right so now we have that all back together we can compress this all the way now slide our bottom back in here all right next we can't forget our little cap that goes over that nut before we put it all together and then we push down on the a-arm a little bit not with too much force but just enough Get that back up there in place. We can take our whole assembly that we had here before. Put all that here. We can lift up on this enough to get that nut back on. And then spin all that back together. Uh, that is prior to tightening this. So we'll get that tightened up on top now. Alright, so once we get all this tightened up top, we can now raise this up into your shock and just take a jack and jack up underneath that a-arm make sure you get your spring seated in there all right and bring it all the way up until the bike starts to lift shock starts to move there we go that's seated all the way to the bottom of this now so you don't have to worry about not having it in the right place. Double check all this to make sure it's all in the right spot. Not binding. It's all good. 
So once again, we take our half inch wrench and our half inch socket and tighten up these two bolts, put the rack on, and we're done. Easy as that. Of course, the tires would help too. should be no movement in the tube. All good. Then it's just a matter of sticking our tire back on now. Uh, I don't have wheel spacers. And I got a wider front tire on than uh, what the factory calls for. I got a nine inch instead of an eight inch. They're the traction nitros. I did a little thing on there a few years ago. I basically got two flat washers on each one and that brought it out far enough for me to get the, uh, the wheel on without any rubbing. Wheel spacer would probably be better and maybe safer. Although I haven't had any issues in the last three years. All right, with our new EPI shocks, Number WE320010. Um, installed. See, the bike is no longer a Bambi. And it's actually uh, almost two inches higher. It's a little over one and three quarter inches measured at the, the fender height. I only put it on the front, so I might need, need to put a, another set on the back. I was trying to get rid of the, I guess, the sprawled front. But uh, now I think it's a little bit higher in the front than it is on the back. Once again, not sponsored, not nothing like that. I have the uh, the receipt actually for for the two springs and here in Canada, uh, they cost uh, almost, it was around $165 Canadian for two. No doubt they're gonna be a little bit stiffer, uh, which is okay, because the other ones are really, really soft, 15 years old, and uh, I guess after a ride now they'll settle out a little bit too. We'll come back to that after the fact and uh, see if they settle out after uh, a ride I got coming up on the weekend, which we're going to do 15-20 miles. Uh, until then, I'll let you know very shortly.